Hey everybody, how you doing out there? What's going on? What's going on? It's Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, saying, hey, what is up? Happy Wednesday and all that jazz. Um, yeah, so welcome to the game gallery. If you're wondering what this show is about, well, it's simple. This is the show where we talk about games and gaming and this is where i make a bunch of recommendations to you guys that you know the stuff i'm playing let you know the stuff that i i like i think you guys might like and why so yeah that's one of the great big things that we're doing here um and i think i think i finally muted my phone before we got it started so yeah there we go um <laughs> got it all done so yeah um thank you guys for showing up thank you guys for being here as i said i'm solar gray the cinematic sorcerer i got my tobacco i got my coffee mm. i know that seemed like a deep pour for a pull but haha i've got this much now and um before we get to it i got a couple of quick announcements so let's just get down to a little bit of business here i want to thank you guys for showing up today and why what is that that is wow that sounds like a jam and when i'm jamming out like that i'm saying if you guys want to be here today with us thank you so much for showing up and all you got to do is talk to us in the comment section because i've got it up i'm showing it i'm doing all that jazz and of course all you got to do if you don't want to do that and you're like, I don't want to be uh, singled out in public and all that Jeff and all that stuff. I get you. So all you got to do is pull up your keyboard and type in back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K -E -E at gmail.com. Uh, send us an email. Put whether or not you want me to read it out loud in the um, in the subject line. That way I know exactly where we stand and all that jazz. And of course, um, head on over to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. Full disclosure, the YouTube channel is not monetized, so I'm just trying to get people um, onto the channel so I can get the word out and we can make the community grow and we can do all of that stuff. Isn't that fun? Hit it, also, hit us up on the social medias at Back in the Deck on Twitter, at Back in the Deck on Instagram. And if you are part of that wretched hive of scum and villainy and um, fantastic fantastically thought out discussions that never turn into public debate known as facebook all you have to do is look for deckers on the book and that is the deckers group hmm. where the deckers and everybody can get together talk about stuff show off the stuff that we've been making and all of that jazz now I did let you guys know that uh, the YouTube page is not monetized because I don't like playing with the YouTube algorithms and the laws and all that stuff. So we are affiliate here on Twitch, so it's a thing. Um, and I like it here on Twitch. I do. I really do like it here on Twitch. I like doing everything live because, yeah, I do it live. Okay, I don't really like writing. Anyway, um, I'll, but if, uh, if you get more value out of what we do here monday tuesday wednesday and thursday if that is more valuable to you than one coffee refill a month then head on over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p and become a regular decker that's it just just you know i mean you're a decker whether or not you pay or not i'm just letting you guys know but you know you get access to polls and patreon only content like some of the videos i post of the games that i run and all that jazz you know the process behind the scene we do um you know there are higher tiers you know we go all the way up to 100 bucks if you got that kind of cash i don't but if you got to go outside to go get that cash stay at home we're under a freaking pandemic but um once you hit the royalty tier which is about here i give you a shout out at every single show that we do much like i'm shouting out queen shannon boom boom lay his majesty the king paul d mansfield and as always our ace in the hole jennifer kroll so um those are the ways that you can help us out um keep the lights on and all that stuff i don't like using obscure language and you guys get it all over the internet you know if you could just push that button it really helps us out it helps support us it makes these videos possible look this stuff costs money <laughs> i mean it just comes down to that so i can get a day job um 
and maybe pump out content twice a month because the only jobs that were hiring me before were serious hardcore labor. So I just came home too tired, too worn out to edit videos and talk to you guys about all this stuff and do all the research and look stuff up. Or you guys can help me out here um, by becoming a patron, encouraging your friends to become a patron and um, making it so that we can pay for the cameras and the mics and the cables that go out all the time. And of course, replacing the lights and building all of the stuff that we do for the Patreon perks and for the community service that we do. Like we go out and we we teach kids how to play tabletop role-playing games and paint miniatures and do all that stuff. But all those things need supplies. So that's where your guys' Patreon money goes. Um, Thursday, every Thursday, is the Hobby Hall where I teach people how to do things with crafting. Last week we made these, which doesn't seem like that cool, but look. And you're like, oh yeah, no, he just glued a bunch of... um. He just glued a whole bunch of popsicle sticks together. Oh no, watch the show. Cause it started off as a piece of foam. That's right. And um, cause we teach y'all how to make your own, your, your own toys because I grew up poor myself. So I had to make my own toys and I'm letting y'all know you're not alone. Okay, so you know, that's one of the things that we do out here and the Patreon money really helps us um, pay for all this stuff. Not to mention if I have certain guests on, they might need a fee to pay for their time and all that stuff. So, you know, that's how you guys help support us. And I really appreciate that. And if you think, wow, he's making all them fat stacks, um, from Twitch. No, <laughs> no, no, not, not making fat stacks from Twitch. Like at all, like at all. Um, not even enough to qualify for stimulus money. So that's that's the realness of the whole thing. So yeah, um, spread the word, get the deckers out there. You know, um, sign up for a buck a month if you guys can afford it. I get that. Oh, millions of people just got laid off. I'm with you. Okay. So if you can't afford it, cool. If you can't afford it, I appreciate it. And um, you know, we're here for you guys. And remember. Um, everybody's welcome as long as you ain't here to take over and make sure that other people that aren't already your friends can come in. That's just the way we work. Anyway, um, if you guys are wondering what today's show is about, because I left a real cryptic message. I'm like, today we're going to be talking about a thing from a game, a D&D game from the 90s. It's like, you know what? <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, I didn't give um, I didn't give a major shout out, of course, to NP City because you guys are, you guys are killing it out there. Um, yeah, let's take a look over here. We've got Impossible Pub Adventurers. Like, is there like a social club that requires all to own all these turtlenecks, like a flannels at the Possum Lodge? Yes, yes, there is. No, um. All right, let me let me put this out there real quick for you guys that don't already know. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube. I watch a lot of stuff. And um, everybody who does anything was inspired by someone that came before them. That's just um, that's just that, that's just the whole thing. Um, I think it was back in the aughts that I was inspired by that guy with the glasses. Um, specifically because that guy in the glasses was like, he's that guy in the glasses. Okay. Well, he also had that girl in the glasses and he was the nostalgia critic and there was a nostalgia chick and I'm like, okay, that guy in the glasses, that girl in the glasses and all that stuff. And I'm like, Hmm. Um, all right. All right. So what could I be? And I'm like, you know, I like turtlenecks. I could be that guy in a turtleneck. Matter of fact. Yeah. Cause you know, I already have a closet full of them. So yeah, I'm the cinematic sorcerer and my consistent, my consistent thing that they say in the entertainment industry, my hook, my gimmick would be turtlenecks, but really it just comes down, um, <laughs> you know, it just comes down to, um, I've always liked turtlenecks, which is funny cause I never liked ties. But yeah, and you know, there are turtlenecks for all occasions. It's just one of them things. I guess I might have seen Shaft when I was too young to remember because I do like turtlenecks and music that goes. And 
I actually had a little radio in my pocket on my 18th birthday that actually had music like that playing while I walked down the street. You know, so yeah, so that's the whole thing. So no, it's not a secret society because, you know, I just put it all out there. But if you guys are wondering what today's thing is and you're not looking in the chat, um, <coughs> um, I'm doing a little follow up. Um, because yesterday's show, yesterday's show just had me hot, hot. I was so angry yesterday because of a thing that came up on my feed. So I'm gonna put this out there again. Okay. Because, um, yeah, this is one of the things that came up on my feed where it was like, so sick of all these people who think they're gamers. No, you're not. You're not even close to being gamers. Okay. I hate gatekeeping i hate it 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 and i didn't do the normal um i didn't do the normal internet thing of finding this person looking them up and getting their whole history i don't know i don't I, i'm when i say i'm too old for this it means i'm too tired and i've got better things to do but it got me thinking some people are like we're real gamers. We spend hundreds of hours and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know, I hear that from people that play FPSs. I hear that from people that play things like Pokemon Go. Um, and I'm tired of all these people fighting for a title, especially when there were hundreds of thousands of people, I dare say millions, um, over the globe over the course of time that already had that title. <laughs> and um you know i went off on it yesterday you guys can see it on youtube um that's one of the announcements i'm going to be making after i tell this um yeah it, it's it really makes me mad because nobody else has the right to tell you that you don't like the things you like nobody that, that ain't no that that's that's not cool again um what gives them the authority and was there like a secret club a secret meeting that put down this arcane and occult criteria in order to get this it's like you know oh only gamers that have a ps4 you know um uh, on this thing right here it's like pick up a ps4 controllers then we be friends and it's like you know what what if you're a pc gamer Okay, what if you never got into consoles because you've always had an awesome gaming computer? Those people consider themselves gamers, you know? And then it got me thinking, I've been a gamer for longer than video games have been part of popular culture, okay? Um, they are official entertainment industry, okay? Um, video games cost more to make than movies do, okay? Um, like there was a time when world of warcraft was in almost every house and everybody played world of warcraft and it was a worldwide phenomenon um being here in southern california i know people who work at the company that made it and um and i knew people who worked on it it was very much a company town type of game just like people that live in LA and work in the movie industry. And it's there to entertain people, it's interactive storytelling, so it very much is the entertainment industry. And sorry to tell you guys, but WoW costed billions of dollars to program and make and distribute. And um, the new Final Fantasy remake costed billions of dollars to bring up. This is billions of dollars in production stuff where movies, my preferred um, my preferred source of entertainment, is happy when they make a billion dollars. So video games are real. They are real. They are part of entertainment culture. They are a real thing that makes real money for real people all the way across the planet, and that's just how it go. Okay? Um, but I've been playing games for a long time a long time like i've been playing games not not video games particularly but you know board games and role-playing games for longer 
then a good amount of current gamers have been alive. And there are certain types of games I couldn't play because I didn't have the money. You know, because I grew up a po' black child. And even when there was the money in my household, there was nowhere local to buy it. You, you, you get what I mean? And that was through no fault of my own. So, you know, no, I mean, I, I was just born. <laughs> I was just born and growing up somewhere, you know? And then later on, um, there was a thing that happened. And I'll get back into that in a minute. Um, as I said, yesterday's show got kind of heavy because I was, I was mad. I was angry. Um, not just at that post, but the whole mindset, especially because of the dear all women part. Oh man, I was mad that somebody would actually say that. And I was doubly mad that the person who said it was a woman. You know, I ain't big on the crab bucket. I'm about throwing the rope down when you get out of the pit. Um, to help others back up, you know, that's because, you know, again, I'm just that guy. Um, but then I was thinking, you know, although I didn't play video games for a long time because I was priced out, you know, um, my old roommate had a PlayStation one back in 1994 and um it was cool you know um i was big on fighting games for a long time i was big on fighting games um and i played bushido blade and i played things like armored core and that was all cool and i was happy with all that stuff but then you know i i even played final fantasy 7 you know the old blocky part and it was awesome and knights of the round is a cool looking cinematic um but then after that you know life kind of got in the way got a full-time job had to go back to college you know, had a kid, got a divorce, not much time for video games when you're juggling all that with not a whole lot of emotional support. So, PlayStation 2 came out, PlayStation 3 came out, you know, the Xbox war started. I borrowed an Xbox trying to play Morrowind once, and in truth, I was just gone. I was priced out. I couldn't understand the controllers, and in truth, I didn't feel like using all that time in learning the muscle memory to get the controllers, and I didn't have steady internet at the time, so it's not like I could just go online and get directions. That's not how it worked back in 2002 or 2003. But one thing I did end up getting was um, I built myself a decent-ish computer. And um, when, I bought, when I built myself a decent-ish computer, um, I tried taking that computer over to my friend Tony's place and playing a couple of games online, but since I wasn't there at the beginning of the internet, all that happened, I, I remember trying to play Diablo 2 online, and all that happened was my character spawned in town, somebody showed up in town, killed me, and then that computer got 100 viruses. And I'm like, well, this ain't that important. But later on, um, after I, you know, reformatted the hard drive and reinstalled a whole bunch of stuff, um, my roommate, John, let me borrow his five disc copy of a couple of games. He, he had a lot of games and he let me borrow one and it was fun, although it was one of the most difficult things I had ever ever play and if you guys are wondering what game we're covering today here's a hint <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right <laughs> you know that is uh that is where we're going with this today and it seems yep that is a problem Hang on, I'm having some technical difficulty. There we go. Nope. All right, that's a lot better. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, we got somebody else. Hey, we got somebody over here. And it's like, what? Uh, turn it up, play it again, play it again. I'm like, all right, fine. Like I said. Um, 
today's thing yeah so today's um game here's a hint Yeah, of course, um, we are talking today about one of my favorite games from the 1990s, Baldur's Gate. I was a fan specifically for that character. It was so much fun playing that game. However, this game is a special kind of hard and I mean that it is a special kind of difficulty playing this game now Baldur's Gate is a town that's in the Forgotten Realms way back in advanced D&D and of course now in D&D 5th edition and um, this game <laughs> um, this game right here is super special um, because it is known as an isometric, um, game. What does that mean? That means it looks old. I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. The game looks old. All right. And by old, I mean just that it looks like an old game. So, and the reason is that it is an old game. That's the whole thing. That is, that is what the game is. It's old. It's a top-down D&D game. And um, let's check out some footage over here. Um, because this is what I'm into. Now, you guys might recognize um, this style from, like, Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. And, of course, a lot of you guys may have played this game before. And one of the main reasons that I chose this game is... Um, we talk a lot about tabletop role playing here. A whole lot. Tabletop role playing. We also talk about um we also talk about board games. We talk about a lot of things. And a lot of people are like, hey, are we um who? Oh, there we go. Yeah, a lot of people sit up and ask, like, are we ever gonna cover video games? Are we gonna do this? And I I try and let them know. Um since I was priced out of video games a long time ago. Um, there aren't really many that I play, and in order to play games, um, I would have to do a whole bunch of stuff. I would have to learn a whole set of muscle memory skills. And a lot of people were like, yeah, but it's easy. I'm going to let you guys know this. Video games are a lot like growing, okay? Most things are a lot like growing. This is, this is a big thing, and this is something that I want people to consider when they're talking to their parents about anything modern all right um when you are doing something steadily for a long time every upgrade every new thing that happens um in gaming we call this power creep um when you when we were playing like magic the gathering way 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 back in the 90s we had something called banding and it was a game mechanic i'm not getting into it google it you'll find it it's pretty easy but now that's like general standard play but then came a lot of things like death touch and poison and other things with counters and when you go away from anything for a long time you miss all those incremental changes and then you go back and you're pretty much brand new all over again. Um, this is one of the reasons that your parents don't understand why it's hard to find work out there or why college is so expensive. They have been in the workforce and in the adult world for so long, they missed all the little memos. They lost, they missed the little bitty price increases here. Um, like if you got a mortgage, you got a mortgage. But if you're renting, your rent goes up like once, once a year, twice a year to where five years later, the base rent that you can find a new apartment or a new house for is like five, six, seven hundred dollars more than it was when you first moved into your last place, you know, um, 
And the older generations don't get that because they are in their groove. And I don't mean in their groove. Okay. No, I mean, they're in a groove that that's where they are. And the world just goes on past them. And that's what video games did to me. So, um, I got to give a major shout out to my boys over at the Metropolis, um, the website, you can check those guys out. And, um, these guys ended up going on steam because I had a talk with them and I'm like, you know, this whole COVID-19 thing and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, don't worry, brah, we got you. So what these guys ended up doing, um, was, um, hold up, stop, 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 stop. These guys ended up, um, buying me a copy of Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. Okay. And by that, yeah. So we're going to check out a little something here. Okay. Yeah, I can do picture in picture. What? What do you want? <laughs> yeah. He who fights with monsters should look look to it that he himself does not become a monster because everything that starts with Nietzsche is awesome. No! No! So, yeah, so what we're going to do on that is, um, you know, so I'm like, all right. So he picked me up a copy of Baldur's Gate. Major shout outs to Attilacon. You you rock. Um, hang on. Let me see what I can find over here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Major shout outs to Attilacon. You're rocking, dude. Like, seriously. He's like, you know what? I will get that for you because you're on lockdown and all that stuff. And you haven't actually been playing in many games. You've been running a lot, but you haven't been playing in many. So yeah, so he did that to, you know, help me live out my nostalgia course. Now, I want to make a couple of things clear, <laughs> okay? Um, this is a game, It, if you got Steam, which a lot of you guys do, I already know that. Um, this game is fun, but not. And what I mean by that is um, there is a lot of stuff that goes on in playing this game. Okay, a lot of stuff, but this is, this is a game from the old days, and by old days, I mean this. After this game, um, was Baldur's Gate 2, and then there was like Planescape Torment, and a few other things. I had a roommate that played these games like all day, and, um, the difficulty level on these games is something a little different. It's a little different. Um, one thing that we do like about Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, and I mean that, we love this about 5e, is that you can feel cool pretty much right out the gate. As a level 1 player, you're awesome. Um, as, um, you know, as just a plain old player, um, you can do a lot of stuff and the learning curve is not very steep. That ain't the way, <laughs> that ain't the way that these games work. Um, one of the things that I make very clear to a lot of people is um, this game and a lot of the games in the old days were less, I'm going to play this game and more, well, there was a dude named Noah Caldwell blah, 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 over on YouTube that calls this a simulated dungeon master. Okay. So it really is one of those things where you're playing the game and from beginning to end, this game will only let you go to level nine out of 20. And it is a slog. Um, in Baldur's Gate, a lot of fun stuff happens, but you die a lot. A whole lot of dying. Um, it was kind of... Um, I know Dark Souls is a big game that's popular. You know, the Dark Souls series. 
because of its difficulty and its strategy and the fact that you're going to die over and over and over and over and over and over again cool um but back in my day before we had uh, any first person shooter that wasn't called duke nukem or doom or wolfenstein all the games were that hard <laughs> all of them um if you wanted to especially games on the computer um, when you wanted to play computer games, first, most games were isometric um, play, as in top-down players. And you had to do things like keep a notebook um, and keep notes on on the stuff that you're going to do, the people you talk to, you know. Um, it, 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 was, it was interactive, but it was also very much like homework. Um, this was great for nerds like myself because the act of doing homework is pretty cool the stuff that makes homework suck are the consequences for not doing it but when it's your when it was our choice it was our choice and it was pretty awesome um so yeah um i was i was shown that stuff and i was working um an event for wizards of the coast a couple of years ago and i saw hey they're releasing the game all again and i'm like what they released Baldur's gate for newer pcs in 2018 because one of the things that made it kind of difficult was computers from 20 years ago were much slower which means if you tried to play the stuff that you had on even a laptop today your laptop will be like what did you do and if you could get it to work everyone was moving like zip, 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 and, and the dialogue would be going by fast, fast 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 so you know they they brought it up to modern standards they made it so that you can play and um i'm like cool let me check this out and i saw the copies they were selling at the event for like a hundred and ten dollars and i'm like uh I'm only making $200 from this whole event, so uh, I guess I won't be doing that. And I found it on Steam, and I was debating, like, do I have the $20 to spend? You know, and I'm like, Adam and Brandon, man, and then I got a call um, from one of my deckers, and we talked a bit about a couple of things. And the next day, he's like, hey, check your Steam inbox. Yeah. And I'm like, are you giving me a hint that I should be playing this game on Twitch? Is that what you're trying to tell me? And of course, he's like, um, I wasn't. But since you mentioned it, yeah, you should be playing that game on Twitch. And I'm like, all right, fine. You know, um, primarily because, you know, I have to up my ranks in Twitch to start making any money. And um, that requires 75 viewers on average. So I'm like, well, I guess I have to start playing video games because everybody thinks Twitch is for video games and stuff like that. So, OK, I'll, I'll make that whole thing. So that that is one of the things that I'm going to start doing. But yeah i'm looking at this and the character creation part is so old school um and i love it i do i i love that it is so old school um yeah when you're um when you're building your character in this game you have the character generation screen and all that stuff and i thought you know maybe i should actually do this on air today and then I said no. <laughs> um, but if you take a look through, you've got like your gender, your race, your class, your alignment, your abilities, your skills, your appearance and all that stuff. But, you know, again, just like the D&D character sheet, because this is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons or second edition D&D on a computer, which means this has Thacko um <laughs> the chat's like oh why not i'm like because i only want to be here for an hour today um you know just an hour because i've got some stuff to clean up and you know i gotta figure out a way to do laundry under this lockdown so that that's a thing um these turtlenecks don't clean themselves <laughs> um so yeah but but um so i'm putting out the announcement on um right now um <laughs> Oh, what? Yuck. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm putting out the announcement right now that we're going to be... I'm going to be playing this game. Um, I'm going to be playing this game on 
Um, <laughs> yeah, we got some old school gamers in here today. I'm loving that. They're like, ugh, yuck. And I'm like, yuck, what? No, I'm, I'm, I'm cleaning my turtlenecks. Like, I hate it, Thaco. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, to hit armor class 20. That was a thing, man. Um, the math kind of went like this. You had your character's Thacko, okay, which was to hit armor class 20. This was essentially your attack power. And you had someone's armor class. And the lower the armor class, the better. So you pretty much added up your Thacko. So if you had a Thacko of, say, 13, and someone had an armor of, um, actually, no, if you had a, yeah, if you had a Thacko of, like, say, you know, 16, 17, because, you know, you're trying to get to zero. So if you had had a Thacko of 17 and someone had, say, crap armor, like armor of 10, all right, um, you would subtract their armor class from your Thacko, 17 minus 10, which would leave seven, and you would have to roll over that number to hit them. So you would have to roll a seven on a 20 sided die. Like I said, high Thacko, high armor, easy hit. So as you got better armor, the armor class rating would go down. So if you had like an armor of zero and your Thacko was 16, or if you're trying to attack someone who had an armor of zero, heaven forbid negative numbers, but if they just had zero and you had um, a Thacko of 16, you would have to roll 16 or higher on a d20. They, they, they changed all that way later on. Now in 5th edition, it's you have an armor class of 16, you have a strength bonus and a proficiency bonus of average of plus 5, you know. So it's 5 plus your d20, can you get over that? It's a lot easier, okay? Um, but yeah. Um, I'm giving a major shout out to H. Kenshin. Um, <laughs> yeah, everyone hated that go. Everyone. <laughs> because it, it, in second edition, it was, you have to roll over at this point and under at this point and over at this point. And Thacko was like, well, well, if it's, that's my att attack thing. So do I roll over? Do I roll under? What? Ah, you know? And now it's just like, roll your die. You're trying to get this much or higher done. Well, how do you figure that? That's the number you have to hit. Their armor class. You add this number. You add your proficiency bonus because you're using a weapon that you know how to use. You're um, adding your bonus to, from your ability, which the weapon says what kind of a thing it is. So you're using a rapier. That's a dexterous weapon. So your dex bonus plus your proficiency bonus plus a d20 do you hit their armor? Thank you. There's no more math. That's it. Add two things together or um, roll the die. Add the third thing, which is the die roll. Did you get the number? No. Moving on. Thank you. Now combat won't take eight hours. Um, <clears throat> but um, in the video game Baldur's Gate, they still use Thacko. However, this is calculated primarily by a computer you have a computer doing the whole thing and again um they've got all that stuff now one of the things i do like <laughs> i do a like is when you generate your character um with this one you have either the point by system you have x amount of points to distribute or old school you just roll the numbers and whatever you land on that's what the stat is telling you that right now so if you roll oh i don't know if you roll 3d6 and you get a three that's a strength good day but 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 a strength is a strength of three is terrible that's like an invalid i said good day you know so that's gonna be fun um to play with make no mistake i'm gonna keep re-rolling until i don't have um innkeeper stats anymore <laughs> and um you know, innkeeper stats are the stats of the people that really aren't good for adventuring. And hopefully, um, I'll have fun with that. But I'm making it very clear, this game, this game is difficult. It was one of the first open world systems that wasn't on the internet. Um, 
they give you a map at the beginning and you just choose where to go. That's what you do. You just choose where to go. You're kind of given a mission of, oh, you're a little farm boy. Blah, blah, blah. Look at your farm boyness. Oh, no, a bad thing happened. Now you must quest to stop the bad thing. And if you bail, you're like, I'm going to go over here. Forget stopping the bad thing. And there are levels on here. Since it is an open world, there are certain places that you shouldn't go because you ain't strong enough yet. And you can go there all you want. You really can. You can, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, best of luck. And then you get killed and you will get your party killed 18, 19 times. And, um, and yeah, and the game does not scale down the difficulty. It just is. You go over there, you die, get stronger. Well, how do you get stronger? Go somewhere where you won't die. Okay, well, hey, man, good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, and um, I was doing a little studying on this last night. And there was a dude that I saw on YouTube, I forgot his name, and he was going through the spells that are good and bad. And he was talking about combat, like he is fantastic at this game, he really is. Um, he plays it on super duper, um, this is harder than it's supposed to be mode, um, where you don't even get to save your game. Once you're done, you're done. Once you die, you start all over from the beginning. Doesn't matter how far into the into the game that you've played and all that stuff. Now these new ones, the expanded edition has a um, story mode, which helps railroad you along a little bit. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do this sort of in the old way that I got used to um, way, way, way back then. Like I said, I'm gonna skip down the nostalgia playline and. Um, yeah, um, but this guy is like, yeah, I played on ultra difficulty and I'm blah, 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 so much BDE. It was amazing. Um, but there was something that he did. There was a way that he talked that I wanted to talk about today. Okay. And that is, um, there seems to be some sort of, I don't want to say ire, but some sort of dissatisfaction with um playing games in a way that doesn't specialize on winning combat okay um because he was talking about some spells and he was like nope this is just a role playing spell i've never been able to get this spell to work and yeah it's just why would you do that when there are other spells that could do it far more efficiently and do it far more better and blah 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 and this is something that i've heard a lot in the competition scene um, heard a lot at some tables post World of Warcraft and this is an important thing let me give you a bit of a timeline okay just listen listen bear with me um, going on raids in Warcraft or in WoW World of Warcraft there were formulas where you had characters that fit a certain position. You've got your tank, your DPS, your healer, you know, and um, whenever you did something like go on a raid, you're going on a raid to win a thing. That's cool. Okay. But that sort of became the, the stock standard. Now, I'm not saying that this didn't happen at the RPG table. Okay. Because it did. It did. Um, even before WoW, when I would run a game and I would invite someone, the number one thing I would hear from players is, well, what does the party need? And this is a thing that everyone wants to feel useful. And I totally get that. I totally get that. Especially since I know so many players that love playing bards. And if you want to feel useless at a game table, play a bard. <laughs> um, they're not useless. They're not remotely useless. They just feel that way when you're playing the game, um, especially when you're playing with people that are focused on combat. And there are three aspects to role playing and role playing games. It doesn't matter if it's tabletop or video game. The three aspects are combat, of course, role playing and exploration. Okay, those are the three biggest things. What's out there? Let's take a look. Um, this is where like the ranger class really excels because the rangers are all about being out in the wilderness, um, having survival skills. They have a spell called Goodberry that's like, hey, 
Uh, Y'all need to eat this because you're dehydrated, you haven't eaten for a couple of days, and you're encumbered. you're, You're carrying too much stuff, you know? And... In combat games, these things aren't really checked, but in the exploration aspect, it is. Um, The role-playing part really comes down to inter-character relation, where the person you're pretending to be is talking to the person that your friend is pretending to be, whether it's a player character or a non-player character. And of course, combat, everybody knows. I go over there and I make evil stop being evil with my mace. And the games that I prefer to play have a balance of all of them, However, I prefer role-playing. Why? Um, I grew up fighting. (laughs) You know, every other day, I either had to fight at school or fight on my way home from school. And it just gets exhausting if it's combat after combat after combat after combat after combat. I'm like, dude, can I just take a nap? Um... So when I play RPGs, I tend to come up with characters that are good utility characters and that are good at talking their way out of combat or avoiding combat entirely or running away from combat. (coughs) You know, um, so I'm not trying to make the most big bad warrior out there, bad, big and bad warrior. You know, I'm not making the wizard that's like, I will destroy you all and raise you all as my undead minions. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. Uh, that's not the way that I play. And my thing about this is um, this even came out when I was a War Machine player, which is a tabletop miniatures game that does focus on combat. But in the tournament scene... Well, the tournament scene had pretty much taken over the entire community of play. And a lot of tabletop miniatures games are one in the build, okay? Which means if you don't put the right figures together, if you don't own the right stuff, you will never win. And it's constantly evolving with what's called the meta. And I'm like, oh, cool, you play, that's awesome. You know, I I, I like playing with people. I like that there are more people in the game. Um, and they played one faction. I think they played the Russian faction, which was called Kador. And I'm like, I play the Protectorate, which is the church. And one of my friends looked over and said, yeah, fluff Protectorate. Because I put together, I put together all my teams and I bought the figures I thought were cool based on the fluff or the storyline that was in the books. Okay. Um, that was the whole thing. If I read like this unit does this and this is their origin and this is what they're thought about and, and the rest of the thing, I'm like, dude, that's cool. I think I'll pick up some of these spearmen, you know, and that became a point of mockery. And I'm just like, uh, guys, guys, there is nothing wrong with the way that you play. Nothing. Okay. Um, but with that said, There's nothing wrong with the way that anyone else plays. Now, I get crap all the time on the internet from, I'm going to put it out there, angry white dudes that just keep going, don't you tell me how to enjoy myself, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, then don't make fun of other people for how they enjoy stuff. You know, I like role playing. So I'm going to be playing Baldur's Gate and I'm going to be role playing my way through. You know, that's the whole thing. I may not have all the best spells. I may not have all the best weapons, you know, but I'm going to play like I'm playing a tabletop role playing game and not like I'm playing a series of tasks to um, achieve a goal. Why? We're on lockdown. (laughs) You know, I mean, we're on quarantine and I miss role playing with people. Um, Not that I haven't been running a decent amount of games online. It's just as this quarantine gets further and further along, more people are becoming more and more hunkered and more and more shelled in. Um, And I get it. I I do. Um, There is a saying in jail. You can escape a lot of things, but once you're in jail, you can't escape yourself. And you can't escape yourself because there's nowhere to go. There's not a lot of people to talk to. You can only read so many books. Eventually, you're going to have to get to your own head. And that's why people are cracking right now. You know, I'm even starting to. Uh, (laughs) And I started to a couple of weeks ago. 
So, you know, I'm just, I'm looking for a little escapism, and, you know, that's what I'm going to do. So, if you guys are interested, um, I will probably start playing this game um, Friday night, probably from like 6 to 10. Um, you know, yeah, it's a long game, it's a schlog, and as I said, this isn't the type of game where um, you feel cool. You know, um, a lot of games gives you the cool weapons and the cool stuff and you can like you can do a lot of things that a regular person can't do really early on in the game to keep you interested, to keep your attention because the marketplace of ideas is a huge place. OK, I get that. Um, but this is an older game. So they're like, all right, you going to play. We going to play. Um, I've played and finished this game once. I think I finished it in 2002 with my friend John's. Um, five six disc edition you know and i had to finish it back then because i had to give him back the discs i mean you know cd burners weren't even a regular household thing at the time so i couldn't even make copies of them um so i borrowed the game and i had to play it um fortunately we we lived in an apartment where only a wall separated us but we had a high turnover of roommates so i didn't know how much longer he was staying there anyway but now um, thanks to one of my deckers, thanks to you guys, I have it. And this is a long game. And by the end of the game, um, if I do everything right, I'll only be level nine out of 20, you know, a level nine character. And, um, this is important because like I said, this was put together in the old second edition D and D fashion. Okay. Um, which means this. Way, way, way back in the day, they sold these little things called modules. I wish I had one laying around here, but, you know, five or six moves, a couple of storage units going in auction, you know that. Um, and it was, if you are from this level to this level, here you go. You can play this, and that's good. If you're higher than this level, then you're just going to wreck it. Or if you're like seventh to ninth level, um, play this one. If you're not seventh level, you are going to get wrecked. Okay. You might be able to pull it off at six level if there are like five or six people playing with you, but a standard game of a GM and three other people. Yeah. If the campaign or if the module itself was here you go, um, this is for level seven or above. And if you're le even level six, you're going to get wrecked unless you're like, one fight away from becoming level seven you, you, you see what i mean um and that's how this thing is put together um it's for levels one through nine and it starts you off at level one you know and there are certain areas that are those little uh those little modules that are like if you come through here hey if you're not level five you gonna get wrecked <laughs> Um, I remember, and I was reminded last night, like there's an area on the map that's nothing but basilisks and they turn you to stone and then they break the statues in game. That's it. That, that's, that's just all that happens. That's what they do all the time. Now, if you have the means to protect yourself from being turned to stone, you're good. If you don't, you're not, but everything is threatening and everything can kill you at any moment, regardless of how powerful you are, because it has ways of doing stuff. And I'm like, Okay, all right, I'm up for this. So it's a little bit of a challenge. It's it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. And I'm looking forward to having fun. So yeah, I'm thinking Friday, 6 p.m. to 10 Pacific time. Just, you know, I might not even play that long. It might be 6 to 8 because I'd like to do something with my girlfriend, you know. Um, But yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, Friday's at 6. Friday's at 6 because... Um, and that'll be here on Twitch. Um, Just playing the game getting through the game um and seeing what happens like live play um what i'm thinking about doing and you guys I, I want you guys to let me know is um should i have up um a strategy guide or something on google um or should i just go should i just do the thing like i would do the thing i haven't decided yet um but yeah that's about it um I'm sure you guys have noticed a lot of you guys. I'm giving you guys a little bit more control over the channel because a lot of people have earned it. Um, but we're running out of time. So I'm just going to make another quick announcement. Um, 
yeah, you know, let me know if I should do it with a strategy guide or Google something because I've got so many screens in here I can work off of multiple devices. Um, the second thing, though, and this is this is kind of a big thing, is um, um, Monday I do my show called Buster Recap. And on that show, I give you guys a recap and a review of some shows I've been watching on streaming services. But, you know, there's a lot that's going out there. So on Patreon, I put up a poll um, of what should I do next week? The choices are between Labyrinth, The NeverEnding Story, and Ralph Bakshi's 1977 Hobbit. Okay. Um, so if you're a patron, head on over there, cast your vote. Um, I'm going to be stopping the poll on Sunday so that whatever it is that wins on Sunday, I can watch and make my notes and all, all that pre-show stuff that comes up. Um, yeah. And let me know what I should do, but yeah, this has been, this has been, um, some pretty fun stuff. So yeah, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm kind of enjoying, um, the way that all this stuff is coming down. Um, so yeah, let me know um, what we should be doing. And if you're not on Patreon, um, then you don't get to participate in the poll. Sorry. Um, however, if you've got answers to whether or not I should use the strategy guide, um, you don't have to be a patron for that. All you got to do is pull up your keyboard and head on down to your email. And send us an email over at backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Or um, leave a comment on yesterday's episode that's there on YouTube. Just go to YouTube. Look for B-I-D space P. Um, I believe the thing is YouTube.com slash C slash B-I-D P um, slash 2112. Um, also hit us up on Instagram and Twitter at Back in the Deck. You can contact us there um, with all that jazz. And of course, um, help us out over on Patreon. I want to thank everybody that showed up here today this is um this is some fun stuff and <laughs> um thanks for some of the new people like h kenshin and um kenshin oh um <laughs> yes that's hand knife and um yeah and you know thank you guys for showing up tomorrow we're gonna be doing hobby hall and you know so grab your foam core if you have any left and your hot glue and your knives and all that stuff you know bring the kids and let's have some crafting time together but with that i'm gonna say check out our email send us an email and all that stuff and if anybody tells you that you guys can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth be it race religion creed gender identity sexual orientation your disability or your budget you just tell those people to take those cards and put them back in the deck okay anyway this is solar gray the cinematic sorcerer saying thank you guys today for joining me on the game gallery <laughs>